Paul, the assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump and Mr. Trump's VP pick announced today. Joining me right now is Dr. Sam Nelson, a political science professor at the University of Toledo to break this all down. Want to talk about first, Sam, whether you think that this assassination attempt is going to galvanize Mr. Trump's base and what do you think about other voters if this is going to play into how they choose? I think it does excite and energize his base. They'll really rally around him. Um, they see him as their leader in many different ways and this really juices that up. For other voters, I don't know if it's going to have that big of an effect. Some people who are really on the fence, maybe they like the way he reacted, something like that. Uh, but it's certainly not going to sway a Biden voter over to his side. Right. I do see a lot of positive reaction about how he stood up and, and said fight. But whether or not that translates to the ballot box, we'll see. The last time a president was shot was Ronald Reagan 43 years ago. There was no digital age back then. How do you think that's going to, uh, the, the fact that we have such a fast moving internet and communication system affect this election? So there were a lot of competing narratives that were out there immediately within a few minutes. Uh, misinformation as well. Um, some information that was good, but you couldn't confirm it. Uh, so it really does change the environment and allows for people to think a lot of things about it. And maybe we have a less unified response uh, to an event like that. We're already seeing the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign kind of change their communication messaging after this. What do they need to do to kind of take advantage of what happened on Saturday? So I think that this is a turnout election. So um, Trump is really going to want to make sure he's out with his voters, showing that he's fighting for them. He's going to continue the kinds of themes that he's had all along of standing up for them. Um, Biden, I think, is going to maybe go back to some themes from the 2020 campaign, that he can bring the temperature down, uh, more normal politics, quieter politics, something that appeals to a lot of voters maybe don't want to think about politics every day. I know that J.D. Vance was a name that was heavily in rotation regarding Mr. Trump. I always look at a vice presidential pick as someone that can help you where you need that help, whether it's with female voters, Latino voters, black voters. J.D. Vance seems so similar to Mr. Trump. Were you surprised by the pick? A little bit. Political science agrees with you uh, about VP picks. Here, I think Trump has gone for somebody who's really very similar to him, that hits the same notes that he does, that's going to be a supporter for all of the kinds of plans and projects that he's got for a second term. And he may bring some negatives, right, because he is uh, very far right on the abortion issue. Um, the 2025 plan, a lot of people are worried about that. So it could be maybe a risk. Right. We heard a lot about how this convention was going to be about moderating the message, stepping back from some of those more extreme positions. But you can't do that with J.D. Vance, who really went kind of to the max on many of these social issues in order, I think, to try to get the nomination as VP. OK, so let's say that President Trump and J.D. Vance win. What happens with uh, Vance's Ohio Senate seat? So Governor DeWine would appoint a temporary replacement and we would have a special election sometime next year. The timing would depend on when J.D. Vance resigned his Senate seat. Uh, and there's really two ways that Governor DeWine could go. He could go for a caretaker and then have a Republican primary for the special election or appoint somebody he would think would be a strong incumbent and a strong candidate in the special election. All right, Sam, always appreciate your perspective. Hope to catch up with you many more times as we approach mm -hmm. November. Thanks. Well, this is a developing story we'll continue following. We'll bring you updates on air and online. To see our past coverage of this story, go to WTOL.com or download the WTOL 11 free news app.